Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Olson's going to come. Amen. And preach the word of God for us tonight. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everyone that's happy, say, thank you, Jesus. We're thankful to be here in Bremerton. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. And uh, we were not to a lot of places for a while during some of the COVID situation. But anyway, God knows all about it. And we are thankful to be here with you tonight. And we're glad for everyone that is here in the house of God. And we never know when it could be our last time. I'm not saying it's not be the last time, but we need to be thankful because you never know when it could be, when it could be the last time. Sometimes people have sat in the house of God, not knowing maybe that week they would go out to meet the Lord, or, or to go out of this life, and hopefully to meet the Lord in a good way. But the Lord knows. Thank you for pastor and sister and. And every faithful brother and sister and worker. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. Pastor, if you would pray, please. Amen. Let me read that text again, if I may. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And I, I'm taking a thought from this kind of preaching on the title of a message out of, the, out of this, taken out of the context of this verse, I suppose would be correct to say, but I want to speak concerning storm anchors. Storm anchors. And we're not, I'm not necessarily focusing on and magnifying the storms, really magnifying more so the anchors. The anchors. But, but having said that, we do face storms in our life. And you may say, Preacher, I'm facing a great storm right now. I'm in the midst not only of a regular storm, I'm in the midst of a hurricane or a double hurricane. I don't know if there's such things as a double hurricane or a tornado, whatever the case, spiritually speaking. But storms do come in life. And so... So the Lord knows what we have need of tonight, and he knows why we seemingly feel directed to this message. Storm anchors. And the word anchor is defined as a heavy object, usually a hooked iron weight, lowered into the water by cable or chain to keep, now notice this, to keep a ship from drifting. Any device that any device that holds something else secure, anything regarded as giving stability or security. Storm anchors. And now let's consider the reason. Let's consider the reason for casting the anchors in our Bible setting, for casting the anchors out, they had a fear. Well, what kind of fear did they have? A fear that they would not get their paycheck? Well, that can bring some fear, I expect. Or a fear that dinner was not going to be ready on time or whatever the case may be, but no 
Not that type of a fear. Not a fear of robbers or thieves. But fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks. There was a fear of approaching danger. The danger of the rocks approaching them? No, not especially that. But the danger of them getting closer to the rocks. Getting closer to the rocks. An anchor is to keep a ship from drifting, at least one reason. And the word drift speaks of a being driven along as by a current of water. Now notice this word drift. In life, sometimes people begin to drift. Maybe a person back home went to church. Maybe his mother, his father, her mother, her father was very strong on them being to church and was sure they would be in church and what have you. But then that individual maybe got away from home. Whatever endeavor, career they may have gone into. And as they got away, went away from home, left home, maybe they began to drift away. Now, some of this is not written down, but God knows. They began to drift away from the teaching of mom and dad. You know, it, it's been, I don't remember any exact uh, illustration, but there's been times, I would say, probably many times over the years, a preacher may have been somewhere and they may have been talking to someone on a street corner, in a street service, or on some public transportation, and that person may say, Preacher, you'll never believe this, but my dad. It's a preacher. Or I came from back home, a full gospel church, or on and on. So you see, God, God knows. And God's here. The Spirit of God is here. And the most important thing that could happen tonight, that could take place, is if someone would give their life to Jesus Christ in this service. Anchor to keep a ship from drifting. And that's how I was dealing with the word drift. Being, a being driven along as by a current of water. But notice this definition. In reference to the word drift. The deviation of a ship or airplane from its path. Caused by side currents. Or winds, also described as to go along aimlessly. The enemy will try to get us off path and off the path that God wants. And the need to have the proper anchors so that we do not drift away from God, away from God's word, away from God's will for our life. And you know, God has a will for our life. Not ten wills, not three wills even, one will. And God's will is good, and it's acceptable, and it's perfect. But it's all talking about that same will of God. What has God been talking to you about this, this week that I don't even know about? You that are listening here or some that are list, listening live stream. What has God been speaking to you about? Dealing with you about? The preacher may not know. The pastor may not know. But you know. We must stay on the path. The path of blessing 
and really the path that leads us to the new Jerusalem, to heaven. I just want to share some anchors tonight. Not many, just a few. Really just three. Only three, Lord willing. And this is a type of message that has probably been preached over the centuries. Anchors, storm anchors or the anchors of God. Probably various preachers have preached in various ways. But I want to speak to you first concerning the anchor of God's love. Thank God for his love. The Bible says, I believe it's in 1 John, God is love. God is love. When you meet God, you meet love. In Romans chapter 8, we read in verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Question mark. Who can separate us? What can separate us? Shall tribulation? Doesn't the Bible say, am I remembering correctly, tribulation worketh patience? Well, preacher, should I pray for patience? I'm not going to tell you to pray for patience. I'm not going to tell you not to, but I'll leave that up to you. Why are you saying that? Well, do you want tribulation? Tribulation worketh patience. But shall tribulation separate us from the love of Jesus? Or distress? Preach, I'm in distress. Or persecution? You say, I I'm being persecuted. That cannot separate us from God's love. And you may say, preach, I am. I'm being persecuted. I'm a Christian. I've been coming to church, and I'm, they're giving me a hard time over it. But that persecution cannot separate you from God's love. So be encouraged tonight. Or famine. Or nakedness or peril or sword. Can any of these things separate us? Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But then the victorious words in verse 37. This is from Romans chapter 8. Nay, in all these things, we barely, but we can make it, but we barely get by, but we can make it. Don't say amen. That's not what it says. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Not through our intelligence. Not through how much money we have in the bank. Not through our good looks or our bad looks or whatever it may be, but through him that loved us. We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Paul said, for I am persuaded that neither death. Now, let me go to the, back, the ending of this verse, then go back through it. And he says, for I am persuaded that neither. Then he lists various things, all right? And then in the ending, he says, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But now let's go back and see what some of these things that he's persuaded cannot separate us. That neither death. Preacher, what if I die tonight? And someone could die. I could die tonight. My wife could die. Well, preacher, I'm glad we're in church tonight because you know nobody dies in church. Don't tell me that. I was preaching one time years ago in St. Louis, Missouri. My wife and I had returned from the mission field not too long uh, before that, just a shortly, short time ago before that, and I was preaching in the church of Pastor Davis, who's already going on to glory now, but that he was pastoring. I think it was, it doesn't especially matter, I think it was a youth service, young people service, but it doesn't matter. But while I was preaching in that service, 
preacher, if you're getting ready to tell me what I think you are, I think I'm in the wrong church tonight. I think I got the wrong preacher. It may happen again. No, it probably won't happen tonight. But I was preaching, and a lady died in that service. Did you keep on preaching? No, that you know, someone dying in church service kind of kind of disrupts things. You want me to tell her where she was sitting? I'm not going to. I may scare someone here. I'm not going to tell you where she was sitting. But in this case, thankfully, she was ready to meet God. Her name was Sister Moore. You don't know that this is years ago. But her, her name, if I remember right, was Sister Moore. And went to be with the Lord right from the church house. So people can die in church. That's not the usual, trust me. But that did really happen. My wife can testify to that. But if, if we die and we're ready to meet God, we're not going to be separated from his love. Neither death nor life. Preacher, I'm having a tough time in life. God's love is still real. God's love is still real. Nor angels, nor principalities. Things that cannot separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. Nor powers, nor things present. Now let's stop there just for a bit. Nor things present. The situation. What situations are you going through? I may not know, but you know and God knows. What situations? What problems are you facing tonight? Maybe you're facing problems in the workplace. Maybe someone here, I don't know, the preacher hasn't told me. He didn't fill me in what to preach or about the problems of the church. Of course, it's so nice to be in this elite church tonight. No problems here. Now, we were in Graham in service this morning, and, you know, Graham and Woodbrook and Tilcom and churches in Dallas and Minneapolis and uh, Alabama, wherever, you know, around the world, other churches. But here, a problem-free church, it's a privilege to be here tonight. You know, I'm being facetious. But I'm talking about North Things present. Circumstances, problems, situations cannot separate us from the love of God. Thank God. Nor things to come. Why worry about the future? God has it all under control. Why worry, and this may not be original, but why worry when we can pray? When we can trust God and obey God? Why worry? And I'm not being critical. I'm not throwing stones. We all have probably worried at times. But it's not really the most profitable exercise. Trust in God. That thing that's bombing you out tonight. So maybe the pastor doesn't know about it. No one else knows. Maybe your husband or your wife doesn't know. Whoever. But why are you letting it bother you so much tonight? Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Nor things to come. Nor height nor depth. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Paul said he was persuaded. That speaks of the word persuade. To cause someone to do or believe something. Convinced. Paul was convinced. He was persuaded in his mind. And you know, some people, and I don't say it critically, they're not persuaded. Some people are not persuaded about God's love. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but they're not persuaded about God's word. That's the next anchor that I want to talk to you about just for a bit. But you know, God will help you to become persuaded tonight. To preach. I, I, I'm really not persuaded. I like this church. I come quite often. But I'm not really persuaded that God is real. God is real. 
God is real. The Paul was persuaded. But let's go on. Not only the anchor of God's love, but the anchor of God's word. Thank God for the word of God, for the Bible, for the scriptures. You know, his word brings us stability. And it brings us security. We read in Psalm 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. God's word is settled in heaven forever. The key is, or the need is, or the requirement is for it to be settled in our heart and in our life. It's already settled in heaven, but is it settled in our life? Concerning God's word and, and the things his word teaches us. The grass withereth. The flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. So to speak, when the, wor when the world's on fire, God's word will still endure. You may put your trust in a lot of things and things will let you down. Sometimes you may put your trust in people and they may let you down. Sometimes you may put your trust in what you think to be, understand to be, a friend. But that supposed friend lets you down. It comes to mind a message a lady preached years ago in Bible school, I think, and the title was, these words are very similar, Jesus Christ, no fair weather friend. Jesus will be with you through the good and the bad, through the stormy days and the sunshiny days. God is faithful. Jesus said, I will build my church. We're talking about the Word of God and that which the Word of God tells us concerning Christ and His church. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, there's safety in God's church. And I'm not speaking about a denomination. I'm speaking about the body of Christ, the believers in the Lord. And there's safety in Christ tonight. Are you afraid? You go to bed at night afraid. You lay your head down in your pillow afraid. I don't know if I'm going to wake up. I'm afraid someone's going to break into the house, break into the apartment, whatever. It's not God's will for us to live in fear. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In our house, we have the alarm system. I set the alarm system at night. And you probably do the same, maybe, if you have one. That's all fine. It's kind of like we do our part. Faith without works is dead. We do our part, but doing the best you can. Unless God keeps his hand upon us, we need God. Regardless of all the provisions and the electronic gadgets and this and that and the other, which all is fine in its proper place, but without God, we're dead in the water. And you can be in good health. You can exercise. You can watch your diet. You can take all the proper health medicine or whatever. But you know, when our number comes up, we're going, regardless of our age, regardless of how healthy we are or how sick we are. What are we talking about? Storm anchors. Storm anchors. We're safe in God under the everlasting arms. The anchor of God's love. The anchor of God's word. 
And there's just one more I want to share. Many anchors can be shared, no doubt. But these are the only three I want to share with you tonight in this service. And preach, you may say, preacher, that's exactly what I need. I needed that anchor of love tonight. I needed that anchor of God's word. But I'm wondering, what is the last anchor you're going to tell us about? The anchor of hope. We have hope tonight. Thank God. The anchor of hope. Hope is defined as a feeling that what is wanted will happen. Let me read that again. A definition of hope. A feeling that what is wanted will happen. Are you hoping for things tonight? Do you have hope? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 and 20 concerning hope, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. It's one thing to have an anchor on a ship or a boat, but we need an anchor for our soul. We need an anchor for our life. And the scripture says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. We do not want to drift. Are you drifting tonight? Are you drifting tonight? Are you drifting too far from the shore? And God's here. God's talking to hearts right now. Both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Whither the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus. Made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Thank God for our heavenly high priest, Jesus Christ. We read in Hosea chapter 2, verse 15. And I will give her her vineyards from thence in the valley of Achor for a door of hope. Thank God there's a door of hope tonight. Preacher, I've been feeling pretty bad, preacher. I've been wondering if there's really any hope. I've been to the place of thinking that there's no hope for me. There's hope for my buddies or my friends or my associates. But I've gotten about to the place, preacher, where I thought, I don't know if there's any hope for me. To the extent, and now this is not written down anywhere, and hopefully this is not true. If it is, you definitely don't want to listen to. If you've been hearing any voices, or getting any impressions, there's so little hope, I'd be better off to just end it all. To take an overdose of pills or take a gun put it up under my chin I'd be better off everybody else would be better off now I didn't plan to say this again it's not in my, my notes outline what have you but you know and I'm not saying anyone has been feeling that way thinking but if you have you can say God is trying to wake you up and let you know you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to listen to those voices, those impressions. That's a very cruel thing. It, it's, it, for you, it's bad. For eternity and for those you leave behind. It's a very, and I'm not going to be labored or dwell upon it. But that is not the God. That's not God. That's not the Holy Ghost. 
And if you, so if you've been, had those thoughts, you want to push them out, resist them. Run from those thoughts. God gives us a door of hope. There's hope tonight. All hope is not God. The saying is not original, but it's very good. I use it quite often. Where there's life, there's hope. There's still hope tonight. Thank God as we're gathered in this humble gathering in this church tonight on July 19th, 2020. I'm glad I can tell you there's hope. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing, but I have good news. I have good news tonight. There's hope. Don't give up. Don't despair. It is worth it. Everything is not bad. And everybody faces battles, Christians and people that are not. But we have someone that will help us. We have an anchor of hope. Let God speak to you. We're working towards closing just in a little bit. God's here. God loves you. We love you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's our hope. God within us, Christ within us, that's our hope. Not the stock market, not this, that, or the other. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, not laid up for us on Wall Street or in the bank. Now, if you have money in the bank, and hopefully you do, that's great. But what I'm saying, that's not our main hope. We need money in life to pay bills. So don't misunderstand me. But our main hope has to be in Jesus Christ. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Preacher, what is our hope tonight? Jesus is our hope. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not somebody else. Our hope is Jesus Christ. Let me share something. And I evidently heard this, believe it or not, on the 6 o'clock p.m. hour on CBS on January 4th, 2011. That's a long time ago. That's why I got down. And I may not remember or know exactly all the details, but it was about this man that was in prison. And he was in prison for about 30 years. On about 30 years. And I, I don't know what the crime was. If I heard, I don't remember, but he was in prison for on about 30 years. And he evidently was granted a pardon and cleared and found to uh, not be guilty. And that's a long time to be in prison. Wrongly. Wrongly accused. Wrongly found guilty. Well, why are you sharing that, preacher? This is what, and evidently his name is on something like Tex Dupree. Maybe it was in Texas also. But he said these words are very similar, if not exactly. Now listen carefully as we're working towards closing. As God's dealing with your heart and your hearts. I never gave up hope. For 30 years is a long time to keep hope, to hold on to it, to cling to that hope. But he said, I never gave up hope. Hope is what kept me going. And that hope of God will keep you and I going regardless of what we're facing. God's given us an anchor of hope. The good news, we're safe in God. Let the storms come. Let them rage. 
Let the winds blow. We have the anchor of God's love. And we have the anchor of God's word. And oh, thanks be to God, we have the anchor of hope. There's hope tonight. As you bow your heads, as you close your eyes, as I'm getting ready to pray and turn this service to the pastor. Father, I thank you for this service. Thank you for each one that is here. I've endeavored to share and preach what you would have, no more, no less, and in the manner that you would have. And I ask you now, confirm your word. And I thank you for those that are listening here in this sanctuary and that are listening other places now or later. Touch their hearts, God. Help them, speak to them, help them to realize there is the anchor of God's love and God's word. And there's an anchor of hope and there's hope tonight. And you give us hope. We thank you now. Save, accomplish your will in every heart and every life. We praise you now in Christ's name. Head still bowed, Pastor. Praise the Lord. How about it tonight? Hey Amen. I'm telling you, God knows. Hey Amen. God knows what you're going through right now. Hey Amen. But your soul can be anchored in Jesus. We don't know what storm you're going through. Hey Amen. But you can anchor yourself in God's love. Hey Amen. Anchor yourself in the very word of Almighty God. Hey Amen. And there's hope tonight for your situation. Amen. Will you trust in God tonight? Will you put your faith in God tonight? Amen. will not you go ahead and make your way as these altars are open? Amen. As these altars are open, will not you go ahead and just trust in God tonight? God is able tonight. We know storms are real. And circumstances are real. Trials and tribulations and, and times can get so hard. But I want you to know, amen, that Jesus tonight is still able. Amen. God can make a way when there seems to be no way. You may have drifted away from God. Drifted away from the ways of God. Drifted away from your prayer life and your, your Bible reading. But tonight... Won't you come back to the heart of worship? Won't you come back? Amen. Jesus loves you tonight with an everlasting love. And there is hope tonight for your soul. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You say, God, I did drift. But I repent of my ways. I don't want your ways in my life, God. God, I want to live for you the rest of my days. God, I surrender my life to Jesus tonight. God, I give you my heart. And as you reach out to God tonight, let God be the Lord of your life. God bless you as you seek the face of God tonight. When the music.